Hello. Hey. Greetings. Greetings. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up, man? Hey, this is Evan Layton with H Town Happy Hour. Derek Dale Tulevi with H Town Happy Hour, number one podcast in the world. In the world, and our very special guest today. Yeah, G Maniac. I'm in this thing. It's not a bird. It's a plane, but it's G Man. Let's go. Hey, <laughs> G Man in the building, man. In the G-Man. building. Yes, sir. How y'all so you living? said flyest in the building, right? Yeah, yeah. Mirror, okay. mirror on the wall. Who's the flyest of them all? Let's go. <laughs> flyest of them all. Oh yes, got sir. A little swag. Hey, to him, little something, oh, brother. Okay. Absolutely, you know man. So tell us a little bit about who you are, man. Oh man. So look, to kick it off, I'm a man of many things, brother. I mean, people really know me for Bless the Belly right now, the hottest food entertainment show. In the world I like how you say In the world Entertainment yeah, yeah we we putting that together And then uh Man I do it all brother Visuals What you need Rec visuals Okay bet Yeah man I'm in this thing I, uh, What is it The entrepreneur Yeah entrepreneur There you go yeah. Man, yeah. man of many different uh, Different shades huh Serial preneur well, yeah, <laughs> Serial preneur, preneur. Like We're getting, we getting the G main flakes Coming out next week man. Hey. The G main pups <laughs> Whatever you want Come on with it Come on with it man Speaking of uh, speaking of uh, G Main Puss, man, have you have you done a review on cereal before? Cereal? Yes. Uh, not cereal. That's not, <laughs> but we do. They do have a cereal bar here in Houston. I've done so much research on different spots in the city. Mm-hmm. I think Houston has so many different things. They have a cereal bar where you can literally go and make your own cereal and really? other wow. stuff. Yeah. So I might need to go there. Holla at them. So, so so uh, so you're gonna say, tell them to get their own. Cereal, but tell us why. Why are you? Why are you? Uh, how did we even come across you? We we're coming over to eating trill burgers, right? And uh, and what are you doing? What is your main eating, thing? That's what I do. I and eat, you, but you, mine is like entertainment. Uh, you know, entertainment. Basically, what I do is what is that? Basic. Okay, so it's a combination of food and entertainment. You know, I used to work for the radio, and I would watch a lot of interviews, see a lot of interviews, be a part of a lot of interviews, and I just saw what they were pulling out of artists, you know. And uh, just being in the radio world, you learn a lot of stuff just with uh, digital marketing, sales, all that type of stuff. And then, you know, when I wanted my own platform at a certain point in time, I was like, what's something that everybody likes no matter what? I kind of narrowed it down. Mm -hmm. You know, you got music. Everybody loves some type of music, right? But then not too many people might not just care for music at a certain time. Mm-hmm. Then you got fashion. Everybody likes clothes and drip, but some right. people really don't care about that. What is one thing that everybody loves? Everyone Food. has to eat. Everybody, everybody has, has to, to eat. eat. I don't care in. what you eat. You have to put something in your body. <laughs> yeah, right. So I feel like I can relate to somebody. I mean, relate to everybody like that. Mm-hmm. And um, there's not many black food influencers out there so me just trying to figure it out I had a whole logo with the uh, Pillsbury Doughboy at first and I was just playing with stuff trying to see if people liked it and uh, with a camera roll full of food and ideas I mean I just started posting them and I just was like this is a wave it started started rocking I'm kind of dig into that more just so everybody can kind of get that like that's huge. Like you, you, you basically assess the whole situation. Like, right. yo, what, what, what is an industry I should get in? Like, you didn't even really. It wasn't like, hey, this is the industry I want to be in. Right. It was like you took a step back. Right. And you said, okay, fashion, food, music, some of the top ones. Right. You know, I might ostr- I might ostracize a certain audience in these. Right. Food. Everybody got to eat. Everybody got to eat. Damn, that's, that's huge, bro. That takes a lot of insight. Right. Because, cause, I mean, you knew you wanted to be an influencer. You knew right. you wanted to entertain. Well, I was already an influencer. That's the crazy part. Like, I've always been popular. I was that kid in school that was, like, loud, extra, just yeah. doing the most. So I've always been, like, one of the cool kids. But... Um, distinctively just coming up, I had my own waves always. I always yeah. had a wave, whether it's, I was in like You mean kind of like a trendsetter? Trendsetter, there we go. There you trendsetter. go. Yeah. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, bro, I, literally from, like, rap groups I was in, we were all trendsetters back then. Mm-hmm. Then I started my clothing line in high school. Had like What's every the name girl, of the clothing line? OK Bet Attire. It's OK, okay Bet, yeah. OK A-Y-B-E-T-T. So it's like C and agree. You're like, OK Bet. And that's yeah, how we yeah, go with sure. the clothes and all that, with the girls, all that stuff. But that, that was, like, my first biggest wave. Like, I had mm-hmm. so many people that was attached to that, and I realized, like, we could do more, you know? Yeah. But it didn't stop there. That was just so you, high school, bro. So you so. said that you worked for 97.9, huh? Right, right. How did that fall into your lap? What, what well, was that? I, I, yeah, I just heard about that. Tell right. me about it. So, I mean, same thing, bro, just hustling. I'd end up doing the OK Bet thing and then uh, going to school. I went to college, Prairie View, A&M. Picked up a camera, started doing camera work. Nice. And uh, even then, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, let me just figure it out. Just started really grinding hard. And uh, networking with the right people, too. Networking is a big deal. That's how I met you guys, right? right. Yes, yeah, sir. Straight That's how you, man. So I picked up the camera, started doing that. When I graduated, um, graduated in uh, May mm-hmm. of 2015, Good I had to you. figure it out.
figured out. Yeah, like, dang, what am I going to do now? I got this degree. I really just got to figure something out. And I would run up on 97.9 a lot, like, at their events. See, people don't really know <laughs> Look that, at the like, paper, man. I can do it. I can help. Man, not, not even that. Before I graduated, though, because they would come up to the school okay. and, like, think about it. Your average kid would just see them and, like, want to take pictures and shake hands and stuff. I was going up to them like, I'm going to work for y'all. Like, this ain't hard. Y'all making it look like it's hard. Talking mess. And well, then see, I got on. That's one of the things that I've come to realize. Even if, you know, doesn't matter who you meet, if you get on them and you act like you're yeah. starstruck, they're going to treat you like, right. okay. But if you come at them like, hey, man, what's going on? How you, right. do, you know, how about this heat out here? It's right. a hot son bitch. Right? Yeah, you know? yeah. And I mean, treat them like a, a normal individual and respect the work that they've done. Right. I feel like you can get more across with that than being a fanboy. No, that's true. And that's how it actually worked for me. I've met a lot of dope people. I mean, even, you know, blue face, a lot of different people that have just walked up to me. I like your haircut, bro. What's up? What's your name? Like, I'm like, I didn't even say nothing, you know. But a lot of people in that room would give them that energy trying to pull at them. So I'm just cool. I'm in the cut because I feel like if the energy is right, you know, Janae Aiko, be- shout out to Janae, Janae Aiko. She's a Pisces. So, like, we just kind of just, it's yeah. weird, you know, but yeah. yeah. So it's like real recognize real. Yeah. You know that's what I'm what saying? It is. So even I don't care how big someone is, if you treat them like a real ass person, like they're gonna respect you. Yo. You can't be fanboying out here. Oh uh, no, man. I remember one time I was uh I was on a I was on a flight home. Uh I was I was out in California one time and you know, missed the flight that it, that I was supposed to be on, ended mm-hmm. up catching like a like a red eye late night flight. Right. Had to get first class because it was the only one that was left. It was an expensive ticket. Right. Ended up sitting down, start watching TV. NFL Network. They're right. next to me watching NFL Network. They're interviewing some guy on NFL Network. I look over to my right. It's mm. the dude on NFL Network. I'm sitting right next to. Right. I was like, whoa. Right. And nice to meet you, man. Right. Nice to meet you. And then uh, we just kind of talked about his experience, about whenever he was in the Super Bowl and all that and right. running right. out through the tunnel. That's lit. I mean, shoot, that's he, what it's about. Like he, I say. he bought me, he bought me a shot, and then I went to bed. <laughs> See, I was out of there. Classic man, classic. That's what a, lit. What though. a guy. That's lit. A classic for me would probably be one with Pops too, like Pops on Friday. Mm-hmm. He had a show out here in Houston, and, and man, rest in peace. It was right before he passed. I mm-hmm. got one of the last interviews, which is dope. Nobody has ever asked him about hot sauce on his burrito since Friday. You know, that was a big deal. Like, put hot sauce, hot sauce on my burrito, baby. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Nobody ever asked him, but since I'm in the food world, you see how I combine that? Yeah. Entertainment with movies and film that we grew up to, and then food, because that was a food, like, catchphrase. Yeah. Boom, I asked him, and then, like, right when he passed, rest in peace, that clip and stuff went viral. Like, man, you was just with G-Maniac uh, a week or two, like, a month ago. Uh, so, wow. like, that even gave me, like, man, motivation. Like, man, I got to keep doing these super, like, cool things. For sure. So I got the interview Bow Wow, like, a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. That went viral. But it was dope because people saw how happy he was to answer food questions. I was like, what's your favorite food? He said, um, oh man No like, one's ever asked me this I'm man I'm telling you So if you go into an interview And say hey what's your next single They already know They're waiting like Oh man check us out at You know And yeah. that's cool But they're excited To be on they that platform For that They practice that answer Right and But they're you, excited To be on that platform For that How about them being happy Outside of it Even being a the platform They don't care If I post them on my yeah. page They just care about the dope You know food we just ate Or the place I took them Like yo Or yeah. personal chef That just made some Bomb ass food I yeah. do like that too So it's a way to put everybody on chefs, caterers, food trucks, restaurants. Yeah. Jingles. I make jingles, so all that type of stuff. What do you mean jingles? Jing- like, I rap about food. So that's oh, one nice. of my biggest niches, too. I guess I'm a musically inclined, inclined foodie. That's why I say it's not a food critic. I literally have over, like, 40, 50 songs about food that on TikTok, Instagram, and all that right now are going viral. Like, it's kids, dogs. I have, like, a, a so, compilation on so, YouTube with so, dogs. So there's a lot of music. <laughs> so you put music behind the videos. Right. And how big of an impact do you think the music is behind to make the video? Uh, So... I started out doing like videos with the song every week for like three months. I would drop a song and a video every Friday, call it mm-hmm. Foodie Freestyle Fridays. It gained a lot of traction. My second one was the most viral one I ever did, probably. And then I started getting more into character, like putting on um, suits and all type of stuff to actually do the videos. And people thought it was like really funny. But um, what I noticed were the hottest beats and stuff me rapping to mm-hmm. is what caught on to people because people will know a song and then they'll hear my song yeah. and I'm remixing it about food. It's like, that's hilarious. So I literally <laughs> got like, over 40 of them and if you go to iTunes and stuff I said let me upload these to Apple and see if people like them mm-hmm. I go online now and there's thousands of videos y'all thousands with my yeah. songs I can't even collect wow. all of them yeah. but it's super dope that like people are cooking you know it's almost like a recipe t- thing and everything cause yeah. I got songs about everything I try to chicken and waffles I love tacos <laughs> steak night and, you, and you're kind of doing them off of uh 
like popular trending songs so and both stuff. i started on popular trending songs but it was hard to capitalize on the financial part with that because yeah. you're using other people beats yeah. but that's the most trendy part yeah. so if a new song you know megan stallion body yaddy yaddy all yeah. that i did like kalachi yachi yachi i went to like <laughs> um shipley's and it became big you know but there's only so much i can do with that so like i have a song called hot wings where like i'll purchase a beat from a local dj or yep. something and then we'll run it but it's not as popular as the other ones because that are familiar they, the to. song isn't familiar for me right but you do both but i do both exactly right. and so that's Genius. how i get in the, in the middle because yep. um yeah if somebody wants to promote a hot wings at hooters or something they find that song because there's not too many hot wings songs yeah but if i want to do smart bro. something else yeah like rockstar i did redid it called pop tart so i like nice. want to reach out to them and, you, know. you know that's one thing too like uh that tiktok got right that i think other 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 social media platforms didn't realize was gold was license like like if you think about it, facebook and instagram they used to block you from right. posting other uh, right. music music right tiktok was like that's stupid All right, right. let's that's license awesome. the music right. and let everyone use it right. that's, that's why tiktok took off they took a whole different approach smart, to, yeah. to very smart because it helps the artists as well. Right. Oh, the man, artists, so many artists are getting discovered now. Right. Well, then how many how many millions of people are doing remixes of songs exactly. that right. are just like that? Like somebody just put. Well, there's this one. There's this. There's a new hype song almost every other day. Man, yep. listen. And there's the dance to it that comes along with it. And then right. you're like, man, if I don't know the dance, I don't know the song. I'm yeah, not up to date. But you know, as I've explored TikTok more, I've realized real quick it's it's got a negative connotation to it because it's just people think it's just kids dancing. It's really not. Yeah. It's not it the dance the dan, there's a dance niche in it where right. people do dances but people are really just chopping videos up. Right. But it's like trends. A, it shows you a lot. It's it trends. Shows trends. And then it's like an attention thing. What I've noticed too different between like TikTok and YouTube because my biggest presence is probably on TikTok and Instagram and then yeah. it goes to YouTube. But YouTube's you have tough. those YouTube it's tough because the algorithm and then you have to have longer content. People go get so satisfied with seeing the 30 seconds of yep. you on TikTok going to YouTube and watching 8 minutes. Well, like, and that's, nah. and that's yeah. why whenever people are flicking through those quick videos, Videos. I mean, even if it is like three, four, five minutes, you might watch a minute and a half. You see that yellow mark of an advertisement. You're like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm right. out. Yeah. You'll still scroll on it anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. But that's why I was gonna say why TikTok is so beneficial, even though it is, you know, short little dancey clips and everything. How many millions of views did you get on that? Right. So I mean, whenever, whenever, up. whenever put with the right product or or yeah. service, you know right. what I mean? It's right. And and I think too a, a really cool thing about TikTok that I've been learning is like, uh, it's kind of pushed people into like telling a story right. with their video content right. even like foodies real big right. in in the food industry right now is you get and it's it's all short clips right. which is a which is a um a a, a, a uh, equation or like a recipe that people have been using like music videos it's always three four second clips right a bunch of short short clips chopped together right. like it's not long shots right it's just a bunch of two three four five second clips mm -hmm. so the tiktok people on tiktok are doing the same thing and what i've come to realize is like you you, you see these foodies they'll they'll walk up to the building right. and then they'll They'll pan across the inside, right. and then they'll pan at the food, right. and it's just a bunch of two to three second clips. Right. It's not as hard as people really think. You just got to get out there and do it. You got to get out there and do it. And one thing that helps is obviously being likable. Like, that's where I differentiate mm. myself with a lot of foodies. Some foodies don't want to be on camera, say so they will do that. They'll go get the restaurant, get the food, yeah. post it, and it gives the restaurant a lot of clout. Yeah. But you imagine a guy that's like... Like the Yelp, but like instead of people, to right, it. right, instead of people going to Yelp to see how is this restaurant, you got somebody like me, and I'm not a super crit because people want to know in detail like the service and all that. That's where a lot of stuff it gets tricky because you can have some really good food and the service takes two hours. It's like well, I don't even care for the food, but like I said, with me just doing the food and entertainment, it's hard for me to even post a video of me eating waffles. I could just say I love waffles. People don't. They're like, where are they from? Like we're trying to go get it. So I'm almost like a directory for people with food, but I want it to be more than that too. Like don't be simple minded. We do health facts. Cause it's blessed the belly. Yeah. It all stemmed off me eating fast food and getting sick. So I don't even eat fast food. It's getting no fast sick food. From fast food. Yeah, man. What happened with that? What do you mean? Hey, it was horrible. I I, I just remember like eating a, um some type of burrito. I don't want to put the restaurant out there, but I ate a burrito from a fast food spot, and I got so sick, bro. And I told my friends it was a catchphrase at first. I would just say, "We're not going out to eat no more. We're going to bless the belly. Like wherever y'all take me, we blessing it, bro. Because I I would <laughs> wait to hear what they say. Because I would say, "No, we're not going if we not." You yeah. Know? And then uh, I would just say it a lot, and it's like, you should do something with that. Just how OK Bet came about. I would say OK Bet a lot. That's how it became my clothing line. Mm -hmm. So I'm really creative. I give people nicknames. I do all that type of stuff. And yeah. I'm just one of them thematic kind of dudes that, like, sit down 
and I'm like, I don't know where this is gonna go, but I'm gonna try it. Like yeah. the food jingle stuff, that could have been corny, you know. Yeah. Uh, first two or three, they could be like, uh, but I made it to. It doesn't matter because the fourth or fifth one might be dope as all right, right. get out. But I didn't. I, I wanted to just do it in a, in a cool way. I'm like, you know, you got the weird owls, the riding. I mean, white and nerdy stuff like yeah. that. But you don't really have it in the food world. So yeah. if somebody starts rapping about food right now, come on, it's like I've already been 40, 50 songs ahead. So well, yeah, and I'm also like, you have an idea of what you want to be the change. That right. you want to see Right You know what I mean Like it's kind of funny Ever since doing this kind of stuff You know these podcasts And these interviews And all the other work That we've been doing I have no problem Sitting on you know YouTube for an hour Just going like Damn look at us yeah. You know look at that yeah. You know like yeah. Look at what we're doing man But 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 also then again It's kind of like You know I don't watch A lot of TV and movies Right And I guess it's because Well you know It's I'm you know, We're being the change right. That we want to see Out here you that's know, true. so I mean, you doing that, we're trying to put a food spin on it. It's, it's cool. And I mean, that's true. And I don't really, it's not, a, like I said, it's not a lot of black influencers that do it, but the people that I have watched, the Bourdain's or the Ramsey, I've seen all of them. They all have their niche, literally. But mine do is Do you like, like watching be, your own videos? Yeah, I do. Okay, there it is. Not, yeah. not just there that, it is, too, but you know? it's, it's so much fun creating. Right. Like, it's so much fun creating. The whole process, the the, the coming up with the ideas. The, the idea is the best. Sure. You yeah. like, you get the idea, but that's what people fail because sometimes they get the idea but don't execute. They don't execute. Damn. I'm one of those real. ones. Like, Dang. I'll give them up that's, with the that's idea. That's dead on, bro. When I had OK Bed and I first started, I would go around school asking girls, if I made shirts that said OK Bed on it, would y'all wear it? They was like, just do it. Yeah. And I could have dropped it then. Like, oh, I'll do it. I, they don't care. Like, I tell you, there's, there's nothing it. worse than an idea guy who doesn't execute. I hate. Well, there's also a lot of bad ideas out there that you got to just take in, filter, and just wash away, too. Because right. you're true. like, this is a bad idea. Well, Probably one not going to be beneficial for anything. One of the, the the craziest thing is one of the, uh, not bad ideas, but one of the ideas that I kind of turned down was um, somebody wanted to, like, mm, get me to turn Bless the Belly into a podcast, you know, type mm -hmm. deal. And I'm so visual, I was like, nah, this is not where it's going to be right now. Eventually, yeah, I can get some sound in there for people who can't see or whatever, you know, if that, they want to listen to me like that. But Mine is so visual. My personality is so visual. Right. I was like, let's not, let's hold off on that. I got a lot of more stuff. Well, hey, I was even trying to say that earlier. I was talking to somebody and I was telling them about my opinion mm -hmm. on something. And I was trying to say, I explained it using my hands because I was like this. And then it needs to be like, and then go back with where this was from that. And I, and I can't really say that right. without being like, did you see my hands? Yeah, I see. Did All you right. see what I did with my hands? Yeah. You know? True enough, man. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. So that's just what it is, you know? Yeah, gotcha. So, so, uh, so that was kind of like. I mean, I guess you would say, you know, what was your first, what was your first food that you, uh, that you took to review, and you were like, this might be a hit. Maybe I should do this again. Do you uh, remember what it was? Well, I had a, it's crazy because I'm originally an artist, bro. I love music. That's my first love. So regardless of what's going on, I just love music. I grew up on UGK and all this type of stuff. Being from Houston, I love freestyle and I love all that. So I would do it anyway. But um, since I picked up the food niche, I didn't want to drop music. So I kept doing music and stuff. But also, like, um, like I said, I would have a camera roll full of photos and videos of food. So me having all this content, I'm like, what if I just like made a song about like French fries or something? I, I can't remember my first song. I don't know, but like it just started working. I don't even know how to explain it. I had a song called Pizza Time. I went to Frank's Pizza. I did French fries. I went to Five Guys Burgers and Fries. Like every theme I have, I'll go to somewhere, kind of just do it. They'll see it, and then there it is. And like, like I said, it landed me a song with Bun B because I'm a fan of them. I grew up like, man, if I could have a song with Pimp C and Bun B, you could actually be the hottest artist in the city. I feel like and try to pay them for a feature, and they don't have to do it, you know. Yeah. So for him to be a fan of mine, Bun B came up. I came up to Bun B at the Sneaker Summit because we shoe heads. And like I was like, let's take a picture. He like, come on, can I take a picture with you? I'm thinking he kidding. He's like, nah, for real. He's See? like, man, I like that stuff you're doing. And See? I'm like, what? It's I was gonna by, explain to him, bro. By creating your own wave, like I mean, right, being right, trendsetters right. and stuff like right. that. Even from even from a youngster, just constantly doing your own thing, even if it's against the grain. Right. That will. That's so much more beneficial than just being part of the group right you know what i mean but that's how it was at the radio because I, that's, I was trying because to that's what out. any other influential individual did they went against right. the grain anyway right. so if they see someone else doing it instead of you know they know where they're at but right. also they respect the grind from the other side too right and like i said working at the radio i saw that a lot because 
I always wanted my own platform. Like, let me mingle with some of the best of them. You know what I'm saying? Not just amongst some of the best of them. And I've been in a lot of situations being in groups. So even at the radio, I just saw, like, at the radio, they were super dope. You know, shout out to a lot of them. But outside of the radio, they didn't really have niches at all. Like, you would just be surprised. And I'm like, nah, That was their thing, the radio. The radio. So I'm like, nah, I got it. Like, when I leave here. You have here, something more to offer the world. Yeah. Hey, and but like, I bet you learned so much oh, I did. at the radio. But, see, I'm one of these guys, too, though. Best believe, I don't know what it, what this would be called, but like I'm one of these learners. A lot of people learn and experience stuff through um, uh, what's the word, man? Not bad experiences. I was one of those guys. Instead of growing up looking at somebody who I wanted to be, I saw a lot of people who I didn't want to be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it kept me away from a lot of stuff too. So same thing with the radio. I saw a lot of mistakes more than I saw like. So oh, you, this is dope. Like, it was dope to You were able that. to observe and listen and kind yeah. of cultivate how you wanted to take it. Right. But, but like, how you, you know, how they say one thing goes in the ear and whatever, you, you know, you want to filter out, filter out. That's how I was working there because I would see mess ups or I would see screw ups and I'm like, bet when I get a company, I'm not doing this. Or bet if I have a worker, I'm not treating them like this. So, you yeah. know, instead of being like, oh, they treat their workers good. Like, I didn't find the cool stuff out of it. I, and that's, that, you know, sometimes I don't really live in the moment, but I learn in the moment for sure. That, well, kinda, that may be even more powerful because living in the moment, yeah, you're doing the action on that right. being able to sit back and observe too you can see how they're doing it and how you can want to make it better right you want to, and that's what, and that's where you're taking your path right Plus, now there's there's a lot of value in reflecting right yeah true like just reflecting on everything you do things you go through conversations you have with people all that like how people got, treat people i yep. look at i'm like okay yep. right. yeah so that's really why i just came in and was like you know everything takes time i didn't want nothing to be overnight but Shout out to the pandemic. That gave us more than enough time to really figure it out, right? <laughs> Everybody had to be hands on. If you make it moves, hey, you make it moves. So. Straight up, we said it's all, I've said it like five times on this podcast. If 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 the, the pandemic didn't bring out the hustle in you, you ain't got it. You ain't got it. It you should have been there saying? before that, but that's where For I sure. mean, because you really had to use those months to figure out how you're gonna make money, survive, yeah. do all that. And to be honest, that's what my brain. Right before the pandemic hit and I was working at the radio, I was like, man, I I'm not a quitter. I don't want to quit. It's weird. I feel like I've never really quit anywhere. And then I don't want to get fired, do something, get fired, because that will you know, disgrace everything I've done. So I'm like, what can I do? And then the pandemic hit, and I was like, oh, wow, we have no choice. But I got furloughed, so they didn't fire anybody. They just put us on a back burner. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. I got time to figure it out. and still got a job to go back to? Okay, cool. My brain got so big during the pandemic. Like, by the time they called and was like, hey, you want to come back? Perfect. I'm like, hey. Ah, oh, like for what? Like I didn't, even, didn't even have time, and I wanted to be like that, like almost to where, like, when would I even give you guys time? The weekend, the weekends are the busiest, and during the week, nobody want to be bothered with certain stuff, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah this stuff I'm pertaining to during the week, man. Yeah, I'm like, dang, but it's much love because, like he said, I did learn. Like I use everything, like um, everything's a season to me, period, you know. But um, treated like college, that's another four years. I worked there about four or five, about four years. So yeah, yeah. like another little college term. Okay, got in there, learn what I need to. Got on out there. You know so, what I'm saying? So. That was like a, that was a whole nother session of college. Yeah, you got a degree yeah. in just had to figure and, it out. In a, a degree in like real life experience. Yeah. But and I, I appreciate the experiences more than anything because like exactly. I say, on the digital and all that tip, I brought a lot to the table too. Like I yeah. had already coming from college knowing is the that what you, is stuff. that what you what what did you go into school for? Was so, it within the like the like you said you went to ninety seven nine, hey, let me work for y'all. What was yeah. it what was it? So it's kind of major tricky, then. but my major was communications, which is radio, television, film. So I was obviously, yeah. you know, qualified. But my job position had always been a promotions assistant, which is like at the bottom of the bottom, you know, um, $10 an hour type deal. And then it came to a point where I started doing a lot of the digital work. But that's where I was gaining most of my experiences and learning just and yeah. networking with people because I didn't get paid for that. Yeah. We're talking about digital work. like. 10 plus videos a week wow. but it was more experience than in and not experience on video work because i've been doing video work but yeah. i guess experience of corporate business right um radio stations how they act you know right. just learning how do you even okay navigate so, certain waters and shit. right so i'm like okay cool but like i say after four to four to five years you always kind of like i think i got it now like yeah, we're gonna have to step sure. it up because you learn a lot within them years and stuff too yeah so. Every concert in Houston I've been to, every rapper I've talked to, I've made those connections. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, Bun B didn't even, that's crazy because when I was working for 979, it was kind of like, I was at every event. And, you know, people, Bun and stuff was salute, but it was, I didn't have that platform. I think just now yeah. it's like, oh, I remember you, but like, damn, that's cool. Like, we like what you do, you know? It feels good to be recognized like that, too. Huh? Oh, oh, man, it's, I'm, I'm super humble, but yeah, yeah it's very, It's like, humbling. Yeah. It's humbling in it the is, best bro. kind of way. It is, bro. That's like, I saw, I saw Bun out. That we did a photo shoot at, at a venue uh, with Bumby and Slim, Slim Thug and uh, Paper City Magazine at, at 
Post Houston, which is opening in November. I gotta check um, that out. I'm in that thing. Yeah, you're gonna come check it out. It's like a mixed use development. We'll have food hall, world's or uh, U.S.'s largest rooftop park. But we did a photo shoot with Paper City Mag- Magazine and Bumby and Slim Thug, and it was dope for Bun to like. Oh, what up, man? Like, yeah, like right. recognize me. I was like, oh, that's dope. Yeah, that's sweet, right? You know what I'm saying? And I can't believe, like like I said, he came up to me and was like, the second time I saw him around, he was like, uh, man, put my number in your phone. And I was like, dang. Uh. He's like, man, come on, text me. We got to do that song. And I'm thinking in my head, you know, and it's funny because I originally asked him, I said, you want to do a song song or one of those food songs? He was like, a food song, bro. Like, yeah. you know. I tried so to he was sing. trying to bless the, your game. He was blessing the belly. Man, he was blessing, man. Listen, so he came out to the song bless, He was blessing the belly. Yeah. He saw you on, on, your, on your pursuit of what right. you were doing, and he said, and you know I, what? Let me put my stamp on it. No. I was trying to tell him what I was doing. I was like, hey, I got this food show. I watch everything you do. That's, that's wow. how he replied. I watch everything. I said all right, come on with it. All He's like, right. hit me up. I hit him up. He, I text him. He would still text me back and stuff now. So that's dope. We got a song called Down South on YouTube. Y'all check that out. And um, it's literally a video with like a full jingle. But I think it's dope because a lot of my full jingles are uppity, this and that. This one is like, okay, I get it. For a Bun B and this guy to be rapping, what is it about? It's about Down South eating food. He just talking this mess on there about ribs, pork yeah. chops. It's funny, but it's like dope. It's like, you it's, wouldn't get funny out of that particular one, but just seeing Bun rap about food and we on the forum with cows and all type. Of, he's riding a tractor. I got him on a tractor down yeah, there for I first to time. to check this yeah. out, bro. Yeah, it's cool. He says it's down south on YouTube? Yeah, it's called down that, south. That. Uh, Bun B Foodie Freestyle with uh, G-Man. Yeah. Nice. So I'm very thankful. I want to do more of those with a lot of celebs. So so, so how long were G-Man? Because I, I feel like I've heard the name on the radio, too, before. No, 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 no. So I always get that correct, too. I always try to make sure, because there's an OG in the city by the name of G-Man. His, it's a Spanish guy. His okay, Spanish, yeah. G-Man. It's much love for him, because we had that at first. Like, a lot of people tried to make us clash for the names, but just like that you might have cool. a PJ or something for yeah. somebody in another city. I mean, come on. G-Man is not an uncommon name. But that's why <laughs> being from the South and being country is not G-Man. It's G-Man. G-Man. But he's G-Man, yeah, the yeah. Spanish. Okay. Uh, yeah, the legend. Okay, Shout gotcha, gotcha. G-Man. G-Maniac, too. But G-Man Maniac, right. So I would be on like co shows with people and stuff. He has his own show on 979. So yeah. it was a big difference. But when people called us out at the beginning, you know, they had that they little thing. And I, I walked up conflict. to him personally because I'm one of them, like, hey, bro, don't worry about them. It's love. You're a legend. Do your thing. But I'm going to do me. I'm going to come Let in hard. Let the people talk. Let the people yeah. talk about it. I'm letting them know. I'm not going to stop going hard for my name and my brand. But I'm just letting you know respect for your name. You are G, man. I give it to you. Like, you know, so I don't want people to think like you didn't put in the work because I came in here with my little wave and stuff. Yeah, my if anything, that should be able to be. They should look at that and be like, okay, cool. Well, it he, was bring, love. he brings a valuable asset to the table. It became love because, uh, like I said, we shut that down ASAP. And then uh, I did this song, which is really my most popular video on YouTube right now. It's called Tacos Go Loco. But I'm rapping about it's to YG Go Loco, the song yeah. Go Loco. Uh-huh. I remixed that. See, that was the first like remixes I did, but they were so popular with the uh, jingle. I did that, and G-Man's in the video dancing with me. We're at the, like, uh, taco shop just going crazy. Uh-huh. So nice. I like them to be real visual, funny, cool. Yeah, if you follow the YouTube, make sure y'all subscribe to YouTube. I'm trying to get to 1,000-plus subscribers. Really get the YouTube running back up, but they liking it so far. Yeah, I got YouTube's a, lot of a beast, bro. It's tough. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of videos on there, but I see now. It's like, you know how we post on Instagram almost every day? You don't go a week probably without yeah. Instagram posting? You got to do that on YouTube, too. Fuck. I go a week or two without YouTube, and I'm like, <laughs> You ready to step it up, bro? <laughs> it's crazy, we're, bro. We're, we're averaging about two a week right now on YouTube. And yeah. But is it these videos right here? No, we do okay. this, and then yeah. we also do... Uh, it's, it is these videos. It's these videos and also the interviews. And then also yeah, we have... literally what I was saying. Oh. <laughs> we, we, you said no. You said, said no, not no, these. It's not just these videos. Oh, I, I was like, like, no, it's no, it this is video these. and uh, so we do the podcast every Sunday and then we also do like drunk interviews where we right. go bounce the streets of like uh, Washington Avenue or so we need to do a collab video in questions. the streets and stuff too I think that'd let's be do dope it. for one of our channel I'm really trying to do hey, more collaborative stuff food and shit. yeah Boy, that's what we'll I'm saying like, hey we were already yeah. talking about doing ones with tacos taco yeah. taco type reviews I need to do something for my new song maybe you guys can help me get like a little Spanish little twist to it but I, or maybe a spot or something but I have a song and it's only 48 seconds I can pull it up on my iTunes now mm-hmm. I'm an artist remember I told you I have I have streams, right. thousands of streams for my other songs. My number one songs are these food songs. I can't run from them. And it's just hilarious because, like, I give them what they want, right? So, like, check this out. On iTunes, on Apple Music or whatever, g Main Rick, that's, like, my rap name. Um, look at that. My number one song is called I Love Tacos. It's 48 seconds, bro. Wow. It's 48 seconds. Wow. I, I was BSing, but that's what they want. And then all the other, look at that. The second song, Tacos Go Local. All of my top songs are mm-hmm. iTunes 
or Foods on Pizza, pizza time, time, then The Score. That's probably one of my radio singles. You got Potential Radio Single, Down South with Bun B. That's still a food song. So my top five songs, Burgers on My Mind, Donuts, <laughs> Pizza Time. <Yeah. laughs> like 20,000 plus streams. It's entertainment. Like, it's entertainment, yeah, man. So that's why, like, it's a whole wave. I'm not running from that. That's why I'm, like, literally rapping my butt off about food right now. So. Yeah. And continuing it up, man. Hey, that's dope, bro. You you coming at it from a whole different right. way. Whole different like, way. Like yeah. like 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 you're creating that whirlwind. Like you're combining it all: food, music, yeah. entertainment. Do you know how many like? It helps out so much around the board because, of course, I'm getting the recognition. But let's just say, like, I have a uh, new single with Lil Flip now. After the one with Bun cool. B, Flip saw cool. it and was like, you know, cool. And we have a song called Lucky Charms because he's the leprechaun. And, so and, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. So, but but check it out. That helps me. Flip got his shine showing that he rocking with a young dude doing his thing. The brand Lucky Charms itself, yeah. all that type of stuff. When I review a restaurant and stuff, it's promoting the food. Me, it hits so many the, different angles of what you're really right? doing. So it's just like cool. It works out for everybody. It's a benefit. Well, I was trying to tell somebody earlier about it. Uh, you know, um, uh, someone was giving him some marketing advice, and he was thinking about what did he want to do for, you know, what's a good way to, you know, do his his storyline. And I was like. Be the one holding the light. Shine, shine the light on somebody else, and right. buy, and buy. You know, natural, by nat. What is it? By reverse osmosis, I guess, or something. Right. You get your shine also. You're the one holding the light. Look at them, and I was able to help them through their, you know, struggle right. or something of that nature. Yeah. That's real. And I do marketing stuff, too. People think, bless the belly, I'm just eating. Like, they think I eat for free and just post it. That's why I tell people, if I don't tag a restaurant, it probably wasn't a paid post. I just want to show you I'm eating crawfish. But my stuff is literally marketing and promotion. So restaurants pay me to come out. It's a, that's, yeah. that's how I live. Because I'm not, like I said, just posting it to get the hype behind it. I'm hashtag and I'm sending it to people right. so by the time I post a restaurant I used to charge like $200, $300 until I had people wrapped outside and they made that in 30 minutes I'm like well I have to step it up but you know I still show love to the small restaurants and stuff like that yeah. I have different categories mm -hmm. small business Saturday Sunday brunch day meatless Monday for the vegans every Monday we nice. do no meat to try to nice. get people to hush with yeah. the whole vegan way <laughs> but it's became a big thing so Taco Tuesday of course so all around the board we got that Thirsty Thursdays Wing Wednesday so Every day of the week is something that we can add to a category, but we just trying to make it hype. I mean, your yeah. maybe maybe you can time. go to like sandwich shops and do fresh cuts Friday. Fresh, cut <laughs> fresh Friday. cuts Friday. Uh, <laughs> it really is marketing. Yeah, like it's, it's the new age marketing. But I have a whole media kit and brand guidelines. Yeah. So there's been brands like big brands. Shout out to. I mean, man, I don't even know where to start, but like there's been some big brands reach out, uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and I will have a media kit to be able to send to them to say, yeah. hey, this is my brand guidelines and mm -hmm. what we charge and what we do. They see the numbers. There's over like 6 million hashtags on TikTok alone yeah. for Bless the Belly. That's just on TikTok. Over and, 6 million. Well, yeah. So like. And also, uh, speaking of big brands, uh, you know, we are. We want to just give a quick shout out to H Town Happy Hour for putting in uh, for major work for making things like this possible. Let's go. We have our tumblers right here. We can find on htownhappyhour.com. We have T-shirts, tumblers, hats, backpacks, anything you need for that back to school get up. That's lit. H Town Happy Hour, y'all boys, Brandon. I love to see yes, it. Sir. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, it really is like people. People. It's it's a common misconception. Like people are like, oh, you're you're an influencer. You just oh, post man. on social media. Oh my god. Like it it. it I just kind of laugh because if they can't see it, I don't know if they ever will because it's it's the new age of marketing, bro. It is. I've like, actually had – it's funny because I've experienced that before. I went to a restaurant. I called a restaurant because that's what we do. We either DM, email, or call, yeah. call, call you. But we called the restaurant, and um, I hit them and told them, I said – um. You know, I have this, I, it was one of my celeb friends in town, so sometimes it's last minute when I want to get this pub, but I'm like, hey, this girl has half a million followers, like, you got to pay something. I might not get what I want because it's the day of, but I'm like, something, because we're not going to come in there and give you this crazy exposure for nothing. Yeah. It's just kind of pointless at this point, we sure. got to eat too. So, uh, man, we're super busy, but if you want to stop by, this and that, cool. So we stopped by, um, I'm like, yeah, this is her, this is her following. I'm kind of going through the th stuff with the manager, showing him. He's like, yeah, we have YouTubers coming here all the time, and they just post us and stuff like that. So, you know, that's cool. So I'm listening to him out of one ear, kind of like, I'm, we not know you. I'm trying to show you because I think that's one thing I fell back on at first, like trying to prove to people my worth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then once the numbers and stuff is there, I'm like, I'm not even talking no more. I'm just sending out the info. Well, 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 one thing that you kind of said that kind of stuck out to me, it's like you're trying to show them about it. And that's essentially what we're doing. It's it's uh. It's show business. Right, right, right. Realistically, how much work is done behind the right. scenes in order for that clip, even if it's a three to four or five minute clip, like you said, or however long your, your, your skits are, 
but uh, man, it but, was. Like, but, but 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 what goes on behind that? All the 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 work, the getting things prepared, talking. That or, all goes into the. No right 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 right. Even like, but see me, I don't have to do a lot. I don't have to do. Sometimes I do crazy mashup videos to make it real interesting. Like boom boom boom, they just get a lot of like climax points in the videos. But with this particular video, I said, let me test this out. Right, I literally. And another thing, like he was watching us pay for the food and everything, so I pay attention to stuff like that. I'm like, oh, you're not even gonna give us the food free, huh? I don't expect it, but don't expect nothing on my end because it's still a service, right? Uh -huh. They'll expect it from us, like we just, we got to. So uh, me and her, we before we left the um, spot, we posted a video of us eating, you know, eating the food real quick, just because I was gonna get some content with her anyway. Yeah. Posted us eating the food in a matter of less than an hour and went viral. I don't know, it was just literally us eating, bro. We didn't put no special effects on it, no sound yeah. effects. We bid it. We looked like, oh man, that's good. Da -da. And thousands, thousands of likes, views, comments. People mm. like, where that said? Tagging, obviously trying to see where it said because we didn't post where we right, were. Yeah. So I, so the restaurant saw it and started coming under the post like it's us tagging every single person I post to get that recognition. We shut the comments off. Wow. Yeah. Respectfully, we wow. just was like, I told you before I came in what we were and what we had going. Mm -hmm. So we would hope that you would, you know what I'm saying, look yeah. into it a little bit or something. He and kind he watched you pay for the food. Yeah, and, and then he wanted to kind of right. Right. Kind of he wants to come get, Yeah, the, because I saw he got like like 10 followers quick. Once he started coming, and then people were like, oh, is that so-and-so? And then he's taking So would you think he kind of didn't take you seriously yeah, at first? Yeah, right, right, right. So, but you're not going to reap the, the, the benefits the benefit, of us, yeah, right? Sure. So you would have got thousands of followers had I went to sleep and just left the comments on, and then you felt like you probably would have probably would have even tagged them. Yeah. You so, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Got even got more. So I'm just like, you know what, it's love you with You know what uh, that reminds me of? Marketing. What? Straight up yeah. marketing. But, but that reminds me of whenever we were at Club Val. Yeah. And we had the Super Bowl party, yeah. and they were streaming it. Yeah. Right. Slim Dunk walked out. <laughs> he said he did what? Walk. Oh, he walked out? They tried, we, we were working with this uh, club and stuff for a very short while. Yeah. And they were have they had Slim Thug for a Super Bowl party. Slim Thug was doing his watch party there. They tried streaming it. Yeah. Instead of like Instead actually of buying, buying, buying it, right. they wow. just tried like streaming it for free. Yeah. So it's all skipping and right. sounds bad. Right. Are popping up. bad. People will do that. I've had to, just today, to be honest with you, I went to a spot and people have noticed me out and stuff. So he was like, Can I take a picture and stuff like that? The restaurant owner. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Sure, come on, we can take a picture. He literally turned the camera on, like, Tell him it was good. And I'm like, Oh, I'm not telling him nothing. That's going to that, be $200. Yeah, because <laughs> you want me to talk? It's going to cost mean, you, that's player. That's what I'm saying. Like, I ride around without a manager and all that. I'm 1D, but think about it. That's a little cheat code for them. They'll post it. Hey, this big. Well, see, they, they they probably went. To, they they probably have some experience in business and know that. And yeah. know that slick, yeah. that slick way. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the slick little loopholes were yeah. like, hey, do us a do yeah. us a favor. Would yeah. you help your brother out? Tell yeah. us how you felt about the burgers. Yeah. And I was like, no, I ain't. Yeah. <laughs> I let them know. I said, nah, it's all good. But like I said, the food will be good. I respect people in their ba their business, but they gotta respect me and mine too. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Joe, no shout out to Joe. What's up, Joe? Joe, shout out Joe. Shout out Joe. Joe, Yo, big J dog, Joe. man. We yeah. couldn't do this without you, player. <laughs> we Joe. absolutely couldn't hey, do this. Plus, I want to shout out G Maniac yeah, over here. This sure. man, marketing genius. Y'all ain't even see it, but we're sitting here on the podcast slide. He's talking. Yeah. Okay. Working his working his phone goes live on IG and everything. Y'all go check out his IG too. What's your yeah. IG handle, bro? Uh, G Maniac. G M A Y N I A C. I do my own little thing on there. You might see me with Trey Nub acting crazy. You might yeah. see the food stuff. You might see me giving back to kids during school time. I'm yeah. all over the place. You know, there's so, nothing wrong with a little double dipping on it. You know, oh, yeah. getting quality yeah. photos right there. Getting quality photos. Yeah. Right no, he's here. live. Yeah. We live. We live, baby. We excuse live. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. Hey, hey, get on his live. Hey, hey, hey show some go. love, baby. Show let's some love. Go. Let's go now. End the thing, man. They end the thing. They logging in. What's Come up on. with Shark Queens? Yeah, TV? man. Let them know. But, uh. Yeah, put them the logo. Let them see what's up. <laughs> Fuck yeah. H-Town, H -Town, baby. End this thing. Don't forget it, son. So, I want to kind of, I want to kind of dive in this a little more. Um, the other benefit, too, is like, okay, Anyone, everyone makes the social media, right? Right. So, these these restaurants and stuff, they can advertise on themselves for their social media. Right. But the gold in what you've got, bro, right. is now it's G Maniac right. saying how good the restaurant is. Right. Like I said, and you can go gold. to Yelp and like see people hidden in comments yeah. trying to figure it out, or you can go to this guy that everybody likes and like, let me just ask him. You know. Yeah. So I've. The proof is in the pudding now. Yes, bro. sir. I've literally done restaurants to where like I've hyped them up, did my video. They might have a 
a special meal that they want to um, promote or something. Because mm-hmm. that's what I'll do. I try to highlight your best stuff. Right. I don't just go eat chicken wings to eat chicken wings. I'm like, okay, do you have bacon wrapped with salt? The and food could all be good, and like, then you're like, the tater tots were soggy. This restaurant sucks. You're not oh, gonna yeah, do that. Yeah. No, 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 no. It, that's not even that, bro. Like sometimes the food might not be over the top, but I know what it is for a person that might like it. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean somebody else might. Like it. You right. might not like right. kale, right. but I'm not gonna say it's bad. But um, Damn, with that's, me, that's good, bro. Yeah, I just try to find like the dopest stuff with your restaurant. What makes your restaurant unique? So yeah. if I go there and I'm just trying to give me a burger, it's like, what kind of burger is this? Oh, this is the mountain top burger well, where see, we have pancakes on top of the burger. One, like, one of my ment- one shit. of my mentors that I've had along the years always, you know, told me even from a youngster, whenever we were getting started out with H Town Happy Hour, right? He was like, you need to have, uh, you know, we call it a USP. It's a unique right. selling point. What's one thing that gets you out specifically that right. sets you apart from everyone else? Right, exactly. You know, and uh, and that's obviously something that, you know, we've held with us. And I, I like to think we, you know, kind of have a whole unique blend about us yeah. <laughs> with, with this time. stuff. And that's kind of what you're able to bring, too, something unique. Right. For yeah. sure. Ed- and it's, it's also like if Evan tells you how cool Evan is, right. you're just kind of like, oh, okay. But right. now if I tell you. How cool, cool Evan exactly. is. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like, oh, okay, someone else is vouching. Somebody else, exactly. So and people know I, I, I don't lie because that's it's right. He left. Yeah, good, good, so good, good analogy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, people know I'm not here to lie. They want to know more cool, details. Though. He's not that cool. Though. <laughs> 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 Y'all look cool, man. Y'all look cool. <laughs> Yeah. I'm also bigger, faster, and stronger. No, I'm playing. <laughs> Y'all are hilarious, man. I love you, bro. I don't know about stronger. We might be faster. I got broke knees. Um, oh no, but that, that hey, honesty is honesty is 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 right too. So that's good. If I don't like it, I don't post it either. Like so, yeah. people want to know that. What sometimes do you post? If, if I don't like it, it will not get posted. I don't care how good. I mean, how what restaurant it is? Because I've yeah. had a few experiences, but out of thousands of experiences, I've only had about five that weren't just so grand. But you know, that's that. And I'll yeah. holler at the person, the manager, whoever, try to fix it. Mm-hmm. If it's a non-fix, then... Yeah. Well, then also, it's kind of like, man, hey, if 95% of the experience was good, I'm not just going to highlight the 5% that was bad. bad. I'm going to be like, I'm gonna be like, hey, this whole thing was wonderful. Right. Yeah. It well, was brands, wonder- trust me now. So, and I mean... Then, and then, yeah, yeah. And then you'd be like... But the one thing I noticed was the lettuce had a little bit of brown on it. But it, that'll keep yeah. brands like away from you too. Like that's why I say I would never be a food critic because yeah. they're literally here to tell you the truth about food. But their job, that's probably not their job. That's probably their hobby yeah. to be like a food critic. Most of these food bloggers go to work every day and then come home and go review food that they like and just take mm-hmm. pictures. Yeah. It's my job. So whatever you're reviewing is good. So if it's not good, I will literally not take your money, bro, because yeah. I don't want to lie to the people. You right. know, and I'm black. So if it don't Hit how it's supposed to. They're gonna be like, nah, fam. Like that ain't. <laughs> we all big on seasoning and too. all that. Yeah, exactly. Because they'll feel like it's a hoax. And then once Straight you do up. that, it's a wrap. Yeah. But I try to make it really fun, bro. I do giveaways, so I give gift cards to people every month. It's free food. I've done scavenger hunts all over Houston, where I go hide three or four gift cards yeah. and then post on Instagram the location, and people go crazy. I've seen yeah. people in parking lots riding by. I as the last, as a matter of fact, the last one I did in Houston. It was like at the dealers by the Galleria, mm-hmm. where that new Velvet Taco is. Yeah. I put a um, gift card right there for like $30 for some restaurant. And I just was like, this is my last one for the day. Let me wait right here. Mm-hmm. I put it on Instagram, boom. And then I saw a car drive up. A girl got out. I think her earned a wow. dude. She was running, because I put it behind the bush. I'll tell you where I put it. Put it gotcha. behind the bush. And she she held it up. Yeah, I got the gift card and all that. And I was like, this is super dope. And so you watched that whole thing I unfold. watched it. I did. And did I usually you, don't. Did you catch ch- catch her doing it? I didn't it? film her do it. Damn. but, but Not because I, I didn't want to creep. No, you know, yeah. but I guess since it was still fresh of me doing it, I just wanted to live in the moment. Like I say with yeah. that, I said, oh, that's dope. And I, um shoot, man, we wrapped around up there. And that was that, bro. I literally seen, you know. I tell you, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the tough things to do in, in all of our industry is keeping that balance of living in the moment and having to record to create content. That's one of the toughest balances because I'm real big on living in the moment. Right. I The only reason I started the social media industry was because I hated it. Right. If that makes, I know it's going to sound <laughs> no, crazy. No, we're talking, you're facing your fear or something. Well, exactly. Well, like, and also there's another thing that I heard, and maybe that's the reason why you're so damn good at it, hmm. is because it's like if you don't like it, you, if you love it, don't make it your passion. Right. If you're if you if you're like man, it's not something. It's something that you could step away from, but also still you're expert at it. Right. You know what I mean. So it's like it doesn't consume because like I, some people they say, they say like, oh you know I love food, I love cooking food, and then they become chefs and then they hate it. Right. Sometimes yeah. they hate it because they're like I just like cooking for the right. for the cook and man right. and the food, and then they're like now I have to do it all the time right, right. and they and they end up hating it when right. they once loved it interesting right. that is interesting i mean Very that's interesting. that's really interesting i i think i 
came to that point with like my video work stuff because let's just say like um I get overloaded with some of the work, right? For and sure. I love doing videos. <laughs> I love creating stuff. I think that was one thing at the radio I did. Like, they didn't know how the concert recap would look with all these damn rappers running around. But after it was done, I made this big masterpiece, and they're like, yo, this is dope. So I would like that, right? But now I've been so backed up with my food stuff. When it comes to the video stuff, it doesn't excite me as much. Because yeah. it's not about the money, but it's still about the work and stuff. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of weddings here recently because the money is good in weddings. But... I don't really be caring. Like, I, yeah. no disrespect, but I'm kind of like, bro, I'd rather Weddings be somewhere Weddings for eating Karen? Food. Like, no. <laughs> no, I say, I don't really be caring about yeah, what's going on. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of rather I'm be somewhere joking. getting paid to eat, kicking my feet up, you know? Like, up. But Thanks. it's like, I don't mind just accepting a gig or two every now and then, but I don't want to overload myself with video because it turned like that. It was like, I was happy to do all these videos for people at first and show them, hey, I can make your wedding a beautiful thing. But you don't want to like, become a slave to it. Yeah, I'm like, now there's other people in that lane that would love to do that just yeah. as much. I don't want to clog that. That they are passionate up. about right. that. I don't like, want to clog this stuff up. Right. I know, I know v wedding photographers and stuff, and they love capturing and those love moments. Right. I do too, and but not cool. as much as I love eating and getting paid. Yeah, well, yeah, well, straight well, up. Well, let me up. ask you one uh, other significant question. You said you're, uh, you're in your late 20s, right? Right. If you can go back 10 years ago. To 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 a young G main yeah eighteen and, and be like and be like say player what would you say I, I I had my clothing line at eighteen so what you mean oh what would I tell somebody what, to, what from would what, you, yeah what would you what, what are some golden nuggets or some knowledge some game you would give yourself to to, to keep, the younger you yeah to spur you on like from right now what you know if you could go back to eighteen year old G main and be like hey dog this is what it is do better at this this and this oh uh, just keep creating bro I feel like the moment you stop mm -hmm. the whole wheel stop I mm -hmm. I'm I'm a big second guesser, but I, I feel like, like I've been doing that now. So I've been second guessing a lot of stuff now because I'm just trying to pull in so many different ways. But I would definitely tell my younger self, like, bro, the three C's, stay consistent, you know, have dope content, and stay creative. Those three things will really keep you above. Consistency, like, content, and, and creative. Because you got to have some dope content. For yep. people to really rock with you, it has to be dope content, and it has to be content. You have to have enough of it, right? For sure. That's step one. Step two is creative. How creative is this? When I'm watching the Tyler, the creators, or the Will Smiths of the world, I'm like, this is creative. They're putting on wigs. They're doing whatever they got to do to actually draw the attention to them. Yeah. And then you have the third one, which is consistency. If you do it so much, I don't care if you're the sorriest basketball player, the sorriest rapper. They've all been talked about themselves. But probably for their consistency and stuff, they keep on going. You see it enough, well, you're like, what the hell? Well, even whenever they're, they've they been dragging Kwame Brown yeah. through the dirt, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and it's like they drug him through the dirt talking about, oh, he's not a good player, not a good player. He's mm -hmm. like, well, all y'all... Idiots were talking down about me. He's like, I bought my mom a nice house right. out of the hood. Yeah. I have a nice hood, uh, you know, a spot in Miami. Right. Where y'all talking down, I've been getting paid and changed my whole life. Yeah, so people uh, don't talk. But. So, something that I was having a conversation with uh, a couple people the other day is, like, I, something I've always kind of said is I'm not really that creative. I've, I've, I've kind of said that. Mm -hmm. And, like, these these well, I was hanging out with a couple of chicks and they were having a conversation and one of them was a teacher mm -hmm. and she said I hate it when people say I didn't actually say it in mm -hmm. this conversation she said I hate it when people say they're not creative mm -hmm. and I was like I said all the time yeah. but and then it, it, I, this 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 situation changed my whole perspective but without telling them I was just like why do you hate that you know what I'm saying and she was like cuz everyone is creative there's no she's a teacher for kids she was like there's I've never met one child through my teaching that didn't have wasn't creative at something at something in she our was, way yeah. she was like think think hey, no matter who you are think of when you were a kid you're daydreaming you're playing with toys you're, doing yeah. you're creating right. you're creating an, a, a, a movie with right. toys yeah. you're literally creating a movie a, a storyline and everything and as she's saying this stuff I was like damn I used to do that all the time. Like I was, I would always play with toys, and I would set them up. I'd have crazy battles. I'd right. get the homies. I'm, you, you know, young. I get the homies. We'd pretend like we're ninjas. Right. We're and you know what I'm saying, acting, creating, like. And as she's saying all this stuff, I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking about all these times I created when I was young, and I was like, yo, that's when I opened up and I started talking to him that, and like the 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 thing I've come to realize, like after reflecting on it all, is you know I think, I think life. And, and 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 society kind of like has upheld these certain like false narratives of cre creativity is in one thing like uh, like like high art 
painting or music, no, really. song. I, I think anything is creative. Yeah, anything is creative. Just like whatever your piece is, your piece. Your piece could be sitting in the bathroom with the lights off, no music. My piece could be loud music. In yeah. The so, it, I mean, it's going to be different there just for every little thing. I for like. every single person, yeah, it's different. Like, because even whenever you're a youngster, you never sing, you never dance, you never. Yeah. Well, what dude, is happy? What is happy? Exactly. So, all that, you're, you, that, people get paid millions to sing, people get paid millions to dance, people get all this entertainment stuff that we do naturally as kids. Mm -hmm. That's an art. Whenever I play basketball and I cross somebody up, it's an art. You know right. what I'm saying? Whenever someone makes a high football snag over somebody else, that's an art. art. Look at that spectacular catch. Everything art. is art. Birds yeah. are look at, art. Look at that like. good video somebody put together. That's all creativity. So, you know, people may not, people may try to shy away from the fact in it, but it's really just not believing in yourself and what you truly could be capable and of. Then, and then there's different levels to it, too. Because I don't write have, it down, but I may think it. Right, but you have fast-paced creators and stuff as well. Like yeah. me, I get an idea and I get on it ASAP. Run and with it for a mile. like my sister who's the opposite. She's like, I'm not creative. But she, like you say, she might have hella ideas. So I give her that, but she doesn't expound on them so that's mm -hmm. where i think the creative pace and stuff is different but like you say everybody is creative everybody has thought of something everybody like come on sometimes i think to myself i mean i'll have i'll have these little things where i just like i'm like that's funny or i'll think of something funny to say at a certain point but sometimes i'll i'll say to myself has that already been said has that has yeah. someone already said that well that's like that goes into like insecurity and stuff though because well, now you probably worry about the wrong thing instead well, of just yep. putting that out because you could be that one for it. So what you mean? He's not saying you're insecure. No, 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 no. Saying, okay. but, but, but it's also just like those things I talked about with not every idea is a good idea. You How know what you I know? mean? Unless you, you know. Do it. Because you could literally, imagine if you ran <laughs> on the stage and was like, screw you, and then ran off, or just something crazy. Like, you would think that's a weird bad idea, PR, but then you'd be the Bad damn. public image. <laughs> hey, is there such thing as bad PR? Well, yes. they say all publicity is publicity, that's bro. publicity. And you don't have to say nothing bad, but you could say... Well, well, I mean, it's not... It, it, well, sometimes, I mean, there's times where you could crack a joke in a very serious moment. Yeah. Or even, like, earlier, I was like, hey, let's just... You know, with what was going on earlier mm -hmm. outside, I was like, let's just pay the respect to it. And then you get inside and then say, like, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. As much as I would have been like, hey, man, what's handing out? Yeah, but no, that's respect. Yeah, definitely. Respect. Let me ask you this. What are some uh, what are some obstacles or, 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 or struggles you had to, you went through that you had to overcome? Or, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just while, while just coming up in life or Come, my brands? Coming up, or? Yeah, coming up with your brands and stuff. Oh, shoot, financial. Financial, for sure. I never had the money to do what I really want to do, but that's where you dig deeper and know that it's not about the money because the money will come. God has always provided, so I'll I be good. But Amen. I, yeah, amen, bro. I just um, probably just overthinking and stuff like that, man. I became a big overthinker out of nowhere. That has killed me a lot because I could literally be thinking about with my first mind and then have my second mind just attacking me. So I think yeah. that um, being really... Uh, What's the word? Like business sensitive. Like it's no you uh, mixing business and pleasure is never a good thing. It's That's never something a good I had idea. To learn. Like I would have a lot of friends in the business that were friends, and it was like, well, let's look at a business level. Forget the friend level because that's yeah. where you end up getting hurt, and then you think it's personal, and it might be just business. Right. So I'm kind of like, okay, I had to learn that too. That was real. That was one of the hardest things. Like, damn, I thought you was my friend. Well, no, man, and, but we'll, we'll see, and, that, and that's the thing that sucks because I mean, you know. I think everyone has their own tendency. You know, everyone could be as cutthroat as they want to be. Right. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, well, where, where's your business moral lie? Where's your business ethics lie? That's right. where those kind of things come into play me. with it, too. I've turned down a lot of different brands because of morals and stuff. I mean, nobody has wanted me to do nothing too crazy outside the music industry. That's a whole other story. But, like, just even recently, like, shout out to TMZ. That's one of the brands that reached out to me that really rock with me and what I got going. But I couldn't see me working for TMZ. I just couldn't. I'm like, damn, bro. Like... You know, shout out to my boy Jake and everybody up there, but I just couldn't, bro. You know, with everything I have going on now, it was just a lot, and I'm just like, there's a certain type so, of person do certain type of stuff. And right? maybe it would have put too much on on your yeah. plate to deal with. Yeah, because I, I mean, and I'll fetch different ideas with you. Like I tried to work it out with them, of course, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, y'all should do a TMZ Houston. I don't want to move to LA and Atlanta. I'm killing Houston right now. My food stuff. My, I don't want to move. I don't want to move. It's not enough maybe drama I, comes out of Houston. I'm like, maybe I don't that's how, drama. Maybe that's how we could all collab. Well, I'll tell you too. The entertainment industry isn't saturated in Houston yet. Yeah. It's, it's primed Not enough for, for them to want to move, like, pay me on a weekly basis to kind of get, right. you know. But that, even that, could then, actually be, that could actually be your leverage point. Yeah, but it's, I already tried it. They, okay. they, they're they not looking. 
I, trust me, there's nothing I haven't shot my shot at with that stuff because I know how big of a deal it is, you know. But with TMZ, I was like, hey, we could do something out here in the city, this and that. It's not enough drama. It's not enough entertainment. I can find entertainment. I know Travis Scott making this. I'm with school with making this. Hey, well, like, I know these like people. like us, bro. Yeah. There's people like us that are gonna put Houston on the entertainment. Yeah, for sure. Straight up. But in the right well, way, I'm, I don't want to do a drum drama. Well, I mean, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we already kind of are. You know what I'm saying? Just like whenever, okay, so whenever you were linking with Slim Thug and Bum B the other day, you know what I mean? It it was it was at a level of, oh, I see you, I see you, okay. Yeah. So I mean, but it, you're a human like me. What's up, bro? You good? You ate exactly. today? Exactly. That's how. I, that's how I'm Fair telling up. a lot of people. I'm like, what you ate? Uh, it, man, that, I'm, even now, you ask people their favorite food and stuff, they're like, what made you ask me that? And I'm like, uh, what? The people most important that? question I wanted to ask since the beginning of this podcast, though, mm -hmm. what's your favorite food? Uh, entirely, Good one, bro. <laughs> well, my favorite type of food is seafood. seafood. But my favorite, like, dish yeah. will probably, ever will probably be, like, a... Uh, shrimp fettuccine or something, bro. Mm. You can't. I love shrimp yeah. and I love pasta, some scrump and I like love. rice and all that type of stuff. So I think like you know, shrimp and pasta is just you can't beat that. I Yo, love papados. I love that type of. Didn't stuff. they have? Uh, you, I think I I ate it. It was like a shrimp fettuccine turkey leg at Turkey Leg Hut. Oh wow! Yeah, shout out to it that. was I so dank, bro. But that's good. It was a it was a fed it was like a uh, fettuccine Alfredo. Yeah, I know shrimp about fettuccine Alfredo, Alfredo turkey, leg. turkey leg. Massive. Bad boy. It was so dank, bro. It's good, and I love turkey meat, so that's yeah. funny that it actually like works yeah. like that. Yeah, it was dank. <laughs> they also here. did like a crawfish mac. Yeah, they thing. got one of them. They got the Hennessy one. It's too damn high for me, but the Hennessy <laughs> glaze. If you like liquor <laughs> and heat, <laughs> that's a drunk turkey leg for you. Yeah. But yeah, shout out to Turkey Leg Hut. They've been doing their thing too. I actually had a graduation party at the Turkey Leg Hut before it was Turkey Leg Hut. It was called the Caddy Shack on Washington Avenue. Wow. So shout out to them because I've been down with the brand before yeah. they even got to where they at. You did? For shout sure. out cool. to them. Yeah. For sure. Damn, so so how can people find you? What are all your social handles and stuff? Oh, man, y'all can catch me everywhere, you know what I'm saying? In person and on the net, man, but you can follow me at Bless the Belly. It's uh, T-H-A, though. People think Bless the Belly or Bless with E-D, B-L-E-S-S-T-H-A, Belly. You know belly. what I'm saying? Yeah. Duh. We got the belly, not the belly, you yeah, know? And then sure. um, Gotta have G a little swag to Yeah, it. if you want to, you know, get my personal stuff going on. And that's just, I want to separate the two. What's funny is if I would have had my food stuff and my regular stuff in one, mm -hmm. my numbers on my personal page would have been much bigger. Yeah. But I like to give people the option of what they want. Because like I said, if you For like sure. me, come to my page. If you like food, go over there. Yeah. You know, instead of just trying to <laughs> make you both. like. I follow both. Man, we follow both. Man, I appreciate it. Both, Salute. Bro. Thank mm -hmm. you, bro. Because it's much more to what I got to offer than just the food. The food yeah. is what it is. But you come on my page and might see me skydiving with Slim Thug. But, but, like, but, they ain't got nothing to do food exactly. related. You know? what if, yeah, what if they want to watch you without just the food? You know what I mean? There's a whole character there that. To be exposed. Right. Yeah, I'm shooting a video tomorrow, so y'all come out. I'm um, trying to get Flip out there, but it's the I Can Do That. Everybody know the original I Can Do That by Lil Flip. I remade it on a freestyle, so we're shooting like a crazy video tomorrow. So I even do community stuff for the city like that. Obviously, free video shoot. Free stuff yeah. for the kids back to school Where are you in my city. The video at? That's going to be, uh, it's by, uh, across from Minute Maid Park. We're going to just like take over the parking lot, have different slabs and stuff come out there. Oh, I'm not trying to do too much because I'm still the food dude. You know what I'm saying? So my most of my energy is catered towards that, but I still got to have some live stuff on the background. Sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Like, yeah. So uh, that's what I, I would love to give credit when credit's due, dog. A lot of the stuff you said was like, very insightful, dude. I appreciate and like it, your bro. you your vision, like way to step back and like analyze situations and shit, bro. That's what you, it's you're about. You're a very intelligent person. Like just just hearing you talk, like I a lot of the stuff you said is dead fucking on, bro. Yeah, bro. I appreciate dead it. On. And I just learned over time when none of this overnight. Y'all gotta remember that. If you're watching, if you're listening, nothing was overnight. Just take time to reflect. You know, don't be in your head too much. But literally, like I said, the three C's is what'll keep anybody going. You gotta what stay are those consistent. Three C's? You gotta stay consistent. Have some dope content. And uh, stay creative, man. Make it something that you don't really see in the usual. And this is this whole food wave, I've never really saw it like this. I don't care who's reviewed what food. I'm going to always add my niche to it. So I don't care if you're a hairstylist. Add your niche to the hair world. There's Bring something your out own there you spin can do. to it. Bring uh, your own exactly. spin to it. Exactly. So people, you know, they'll like you, but they'll like your movement even more once you got your own little spin. Show. Sure. And be confident in what you do, too. Be confident. That's, uh, that's hard, too. Everybody has different stories and backgrounds. So I'm not mad at nobody trying to figure it out, you know? Yeah. But figure it out don't linger so long in right. the back you know backstage to where you don't really get that that uh recognition and stuff you need for your brand and what you're doing so all my friends they know i'm gonna push you to be better and if i gotta argue with you to do it i'm gonna still help but if i you know i don't want to have to argue with you to you know be better better yourself so and go out, out there and just and do it 
Yeah, like do straight it. up, bro. Just do it, cause like a lot of people get caught up in, oh, I'm not ready, or it's it's not perfect. My website's not perfect yeah. yet. People that ask shit me will for work bl- its way out. People ask me, and it's, I'm doing dealing with the same thing now, because I didn't never think my brand would be this big so fast. Yeah. So I'm still like my website is under construction, and yeah. I'm still doing things because I'm like. Imagine if you waited big. until your website was ready. Imagine you still you'd be nothing right now. Imagine <laughs> if I waited till Bless the Belly is what I ultimately wanted to be, which is a show. Bless the Belly would be a show full of chat, like a wild and out type deal. Yeah. With food, yeah. I, there would be no blessed belly right now because yeah. I still haven't got that show right? right. So you have to start it, and now look where I'm at. I can literally, you know, ease my way into doing that. So start mm-hmm. somewhere because it ain't gonna be perfect, but you'll get it there. So that's me, like facts. Well, hey man, hey, we loved having you on the show, bro. Come on, H Town Happy Hour. We gotta get some drinks or something. H Town Happy Hour. I'll yeah, drink 100%. liquor, but we can get like a sweet tea or something. Hey, <laughs> hey, I'm down, bro. Yeah. We gotta, hey, we gotta go eat somewhere. Nah, for sure. We'll, I think we'll we should do like some a content. Dope, yeah, episode or something. Maybe hit the streets, Absolutely. have some funny food yep. questions. Hell or something. yeah, maybe yep. come run and gun with us one night around two a.m. when we're asking drunk interviews. That'd be dope. Hey, we can and then we can food. do the food stuff in we, there. Well, we could ask food questions. Yeah. So, what's your favorite food when you drunk or something? And yeah, that'll be because that way it'll be yeah. Come my on, dude, dude, my guy. Come hey, on, man. Shit. Hey, Come much love, bro. Good Glad you're here, shit, man. Brody. Thank you, bro. Hey, another episode, dude. What, that's in episode 16? Episode 16. Of the number one podcast in the world. In the H-Town world. Hour, if baby. you haven't heard about it, it's about Let's that go. time. H-Town Happy Hour, man. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Let's go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bye.